The dual arena, where the banks are made and lost, at least this is what the majority believes. But this could not be further from the truth. In this video, I will show you why the dual arena is the final destination of every toxic aspect and players in old school runescape. Welcome yet again, Redbird here. Stay tuned to this one, it's going to be a long ride. <laughs> It used to be a place of fun back in the day of normal runescape, before the return of wilderness in 2011, where players used to duel with their friends just for fun, to test their new weapons and gear, used to be called funny. But now it's not what it was, and it turned into an underground casino, where many people are having real life consequences, because of staking, I call it gambling. Anyway, you will not find any community in OSRS that still uses the arena just for fun, why is it an underground casino, you might ask? Well, as you go there, you will find many types of methods to gamble your money slash gold, mainly whip, DDS, boxing, knives, obstacles, mage boxing, among some others. There is no difference from any gaming entity, especially on the internet. For example, slot machines, whips, craps, boxing, baccarat knives, and on and on and on. You get the idea. Yes, some will think that is silly, and I understand it, especially if you're a player that does not buy gold to gamble. Yet, once you dig deeper, the number one user slash customer that you will find at the dual arena are the gamblers that buy OSRS gold with real life cash. And their gambling addiction is the backbone for almost any banable illegal offense in RuneScape's black market. Let's say, for example, you're a normal player and lost all your bank staking, and then decided to buy back some of your gold from any particular OSRS selling site. You might play without staking for some time, but the addiction and the rush gets the better of you and go back to dual arena gambling. Maybe you win some, but once you start, you will lose it all and end up back with no gold. That is how the majority of stakers end up with a gambling addiction even in real life. The said committee about the majority of stakers, that once they lose it, they go back to buy the same gold they just lost a minutes ago. So, it is what it is. This is why these gamblers are the fuel for any gold selling and all the garbage inside RuneScape, at least the majority anyway. Now don't get me wrong, anyone who has a gambling addiction needs help, not scorn. Sure, some at the arena go and stake like 10 to 20 mil and feel bad, but never buy any gold. If the average player that goes staking and lose without buying gold, all score runescapes, black market and gold selling would be reduced significantly. Next, the discussion of the staking toggle, where it was suggested by gods know who that a setting might be implemented which you can choose to exclude your character from staking. Currently, it is being discussed or suggested by Motesh to the higher ups and I sure hope it would not pass and be added in game. Why? Because it would not solve anything but be much more harmful. Only the normal staker that does not buy gold would be the one that benefits. Yet, the majority of the arena gamblers would exclude their character on one of his hair staking streaks and might stop temporarily. The addiction is still there and the urge kicks in again. What would they do? Start a new character? No, they would go to the same websites that sell gold to them and rent a staking account with all the stats, which almost all of them offer. What is rent a staker? It's an account that can be rented with all the stats ready for dueling, normally whip staking, for as many hours as you wish in exchange for gold, cryptocurrency and real life cash. Secondly, this feature would also fuel the market for account making and botting, mostly staking ones. There are gold farmers who use impoverished countries to exploit people to train account by hand as a full time job in exchange for minuscule pay on the dollar. For example, Venezuela is perfect, unfortunately. Anyway, sure, some of the account would be botted, but few would risk a staking account by botting it, unless it is a sophisticated script. This is why this feature is incredibly harmful and makes no sense. It would not solve anything, but create another black market record for RuneScape. 
the three biggest and smartest real-world trading entities that arguably control at least a major part of RuneScape's gold and its black market are as shown. The gold buying and selling sites, along with its many in-game services, RuneScape gold betting sites, and the loan sharks. Behind every transaction made between a player and any of these guys is a cash exchange for either crypto or normal currency. Let's start with the betting websites. Ever since the return of Wilderness back in February 2011, there was a rise in botting, real world trading and gambling on RS. You could not walk to the GE without seeing groups of players gambling through dicing, flower games, among many others. And there was growing concern among many players. And sometime later, Jajak started to ban anyone running any game of chance, as seen with the toy horse. There was a massive spike in scamming, luring and toxicity in general, being associated with this gambling community, as mirrored today on OSRS. The smartest of these guys set up gambling websites that uses in-game gold as currency, and the most important today that it is run through OSRS, which means to start gambling in there at all, you need to trade on RS your gold to one of the gambling moderators, and once the transaction is complete, the moderator will give you gambling chips on your gambling website account. This is done for two major reasons, and to give them credit, they are smart. First, every item on OSRS is owned by Jagex, which means they can enforce legally on anyone making a profit, by selling, making use of their property, or anything theirs, so you might say it's easy for them to close botting, selling and gambling websites. Well, the problem is that there are major loopholes that these guys exploit, and the biggest one is technicality. The gambling websites are not in any way connected to OSRS, and the player is just trading another player in the eyes of the law, when in fact they are trading OSRS property of Jagex to a moderator of the gambling website, in return for made up chips to gamble. I know for us it is cut and dry, but to enforce legally it would be a nightmare to sue these guys, and not to mention the legal expenses for Jagex. Secondly, the use of trade through OSRS for credit chips. This is done for a major reason. If these guys would use normal currency like the euro or the dollar, they would be shut down in less than 24 hours. Why? Because to use real life currency, it must operate as a mainstream betting website, with all the terms and regulation. So, to circumvent this, they use in-game gold transactions to operate, and they do this because OSRS gold is not recognized as a commodity of value. The sad reality is that many gamblers on OSRS engage in these betting websites regardless, without any care if the odds are rigged against them. There are many allegations out there that the odds are manipulated in favor of the very people running these sites, which at least, for me comes to no surprise, also, as you can see when I try to go to one of these websites, it comes up as fraud and blocked by my antivirus, after many complaints, no doubt. To reel people in and engage in their site, they advertise all over RS, mainly at the Duel Arena on World 302. Because they know that many are incredibly addicted to gambling and a good chunk of them ban themselves from normal casinos or otherwise. But the urge is still there so they relapse easily on OSRS betting sites and in-game staking. Now, once they amassed their target gold, they sell them, you guessed it, to the gold buying and selling websites, and 99% of the gold is exchanged for cryptocurrency, and on and on it goes, another day at the dual arena. For the last couple of years, Twitch on OSRS has been growing, which is awesome, but where there is a money-making prospect, there are people looking to take advantage of it. Unfortunately, in this case, the victims are particular streamers who stream staking content and are heavily addicted to gambling. Q, the loan sharks. There are particular communities, mostly on Discord, which are set up to loan money to players, mainly streamers, at an interest. For example, loan shark loans player A 200 mil at a 5% interest every week on it. Then player A goes taking and wins. Good enough. Player A pays him back 210 mil, rendering a profit of 10 mil for the loan shark. But the main objective for this shark is to loan money to gambling addicts and hoping for them to lose. So on each stake, there is an interest which accrues weekly, monthly or at a fixed rate, depending on how the loan is set up. Then player A go and loans again 200 mil from the loan shark at 5% interest, but this time, they have a losing streak and keeps on borrowing. Before they know it, they are in a billion in debt. What will they do? Kill green dragons for billion time? No. 
they will just keep on borrowing from these loan sharks, paying interest on individual loans they made earlier, in between some winnings. Some might say, hey, just walk away and do not pay them. That is a very bad idea, because these people are associated with darker parts of the web, with individuals who specialize in doxing potential gamblers who default on their payments. They can make life living hell for them through harassment in real life via phone calls, hacking of private media, on their device and even family and place of work. Which is to be expected, since to set up any loan sharking operation you need the muscle to enforce on any bad debt, through terror, to anyone who has failed to pay them their due. Anyway, the biggest targets are the staking streamers. The majority of these stakers are in enormous debt to these sharks. The biggest one I have seen is into them for almost 200 billion GP, which totals at $90,000. When you see staking streamers taking money and say thanks for the gift, you know it's a loan. It is mind-boggling and wrong for anyone doing this, but which and judge X. Hands are tied in these kind of situations, because there is nothing of value as I mentioned earlier. I challenge everyone watching this video to open a tab right now on Twitch, that's right, go to Oscar RuneScape and click on any staking stream. You will not find a staker without massive amount of debt to these guys and once they lose, they just start spamming on this west side of this cesspool for a loan shark to show up. And with that another major reason why the dual arena must be removed. Finally, the gold buying and selling websites. These are the main source that fuels any benevil activity in old school runescape and runescape in general. And the last destination of any gold made through them. Once proceeds are set to be sold, these gold buying sites will be ready to buy off anyone, especially in bulk because they can set a lower price by doing their entity, selling massive amounts, a favor, taking it off their hands. Then a cryptocurrency transaction is done. Should any of these guys move let's say 10 billion gold, which is worth almost 5k US dollars into a bank account or PayPal, they would be called by their bank asking hey what is this 5k you just deposited into your account, or if using PayPal their account would be frozen until a receipt is shown for what is the 5k. This happens to prevent tax evasion and money laundering. You cannot just transfer a couple thousand every couple of days into a normal account without any explanation from where all this money is coming from, so these guys use cryptocurrency. Right now it is the most lax in terms of money laundering and tax. You can open a Bitcoin wallet in seconds on any phone or PC and store whatever proceeds gain. The majority of profit through RS gold selling slash betting is done in cryptocurrency. As for these sites, their business model is simple. Buying game gold cheaper and set at a markup of 10 to 25% on every million. They have always been here in operation, selling gold and service to anyone willing to buy from them. But in recent years, the main users are not the normal players buying gold for maybe a twisted bow or the botter that has a farm looking to set up membership on their bots. No, the biggest ones are the small to medium transactions made daily by the very same gamblers at the dual arena, addictive. Jajax can do anything that will make a massive difference to these selling sites and it would not be worth it for them since there are countless out there and if they do proceed legally, it would cost them massive amounts of money in legal fees just to take down one site. And should Jajax succeed in taking down a massive gold seller site, they would do its competitors profitable favor by taking out their competition free of charge. But there is another solution that must be implemented through attrition. Like economics, once you take the demand away, the supply drops and in this case the supplier everyone doing a legal and benevolent offense for real life gain. Let's break this down. Should Jajax decide to remove the dual arena completely, any black market aspect inside RuneScape as shown will be reduced due to the demand being shrunken down. Why? Because the biggest demand for in-game gold are from these addicted gamblers and then Jajax can enforce on anyone gambling without prejudice, unlike right now. Of course, you can be naive about any black market as long as RuneScape's gold hold any value there will be people always gambling, botting and every other benevolent offense in pursuit of GP. At least with the removal of the arena, it will not be as easy. Should this come to fruition, I honestly think it will improve this community and many are in agreement that the dual arena has become something different from our childhood and instead became a cesspool. It must be removed without a poll and with good reason. If a poll is done, it would never pass in a million years because everyone gambling and mostly real world traders would vote against it. Now the kicker unfortunately, with its removal it will leave another problem that is economic for RuneScape and that is inflation. The dual arena right now has a tax on every stake done. 
where a percentage is taken from both players and the gold is deleted from the game, which is an excellent solution, but only to inflation. If the arena is removed, there is no choice but to put a tax of 1% on every transaction done through the Grand Exchange. This must be a necessary evil that everyone has to accept. Sure, it is not ideal, but I propose that anyone wishes to bypass the tax, they can trade one on one just like the old times in Falador and Varok for major items like the Twisted Bow. I would consider the Grand Exchange tax a convenience fee for saving time buying materials like potions, planks and whatever else. Lastly, if you made it this far, you're a legend. Make no mistake, the arena is worse than gambling because it is not recognized as such. Worst of all, it is a 13 year old age requirement game. My motivation for making this video is not to tell anyone what to do regarding their money when it comes to gambling. It is not my business or anyone else's. What anyone does, but gambling slash staking has no place in old school runescape or RS3 and the dual arena's time is up. That is it for this video. Comment below on what you think. Like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.